this one. Last uh, session, this was the discussion that interrupt about interrupt a lot we discussed, and then we proceeded to DMA. So this was the topic that we uh, just touched for wrapping the last last session. In this session, let us proceed with this DMA, this direct memory access. This direct memory access, the transfer of data under programmed I/O is between CPU and peripheral. This is known to you. What is programmed I/O? Because we have seen here several, you know, this one. If you go back here, this one. Modes of transfer. These three are the, uh, you know, possible ways. There are many, but we are discussing this thing. So this is one is a programmed I/O. The other is the interrupt initiated I/O. The other is direct memory access. So this was the thing that we are uh, stating here in this DMA. Uh, Transfer of data under programmed I/O is between CPU and peripheral. Peripheral like means your I/O devices. In direct memory access, the interface transfers data into and out of memory unit. Through memory bus, this is something that is uh, uh, needs to be given attention. This statement here: What is happening? Transfer of data under programmed I/O is between CPU and peripheral stage. Yes, yeah, CPU and peripheral, or peripheral to CPU. But if you focus this statement, the interface transfers data into and out of the memory unit. Through memory bus, so here this 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 uh, word here you see interface. CPU is not coming into the picture here. CPU is not coming into the picture here. Who is coming into the picture? Interface is coming into the picture. At this stage, you must be aware of what is interface. Several times we discussed what is interface. Means. But for your uh, reference, again, if I go to the this one here, this diagram here, there, interface. This interface again the very beginning topics of this unit. From where here we have seen uh, that every device has got uh, a, a, you know interface associated asso associated with it. So this interface processor communicates to this I/O devices through interface. Every I/O device has got interface. So this interface we are talking about. This interface here, when you come to this, so your DMA, here. communication is happening between uh, this interface and memory. Unlike uh, your uh, what we call this one, uh, programmed I/O. In a programmed I/O, direct CPU involvement was there. It, it was keep che checking whether peripheral has kept any data or not. But this time in DMA, the interface transfers data into and out of memory unit through memory bus. So meaning what? How this memory bus is taken control so that this CPU involvement can be uh, can be eliminated. CPU involvement elimination is happening because of another hardware called DMA. This DMA is actually taking control of this memory bus. Earlier, this CPU was the only one who is controlling the memory bus. There is no concept of DMA. So let us see. No, at this point, you don't need to go panic or take up this elaboratively. But just making a point that in I/O case, CPU directly was talking to peripheral, and peripheral directly was talking to CPU. But in case of DMA, this transfer happens through this interface. And this interface actually taking the control of this memory bus, so that data transfer can happen into memory or out of memory to this peripheral. So at this point, that much, if you get some some bit of uh, some sort of understanding that CPU being eliminated for transfer of data, that much, if you are grabbing, that is enough. How it is happening, we'll take up uh, in uh, subsequent slides. The CPU initiates the transfer by supplying the interface with the starting address, and the number of hosts needed to be transferred, and then proceeds to execute other tasks. This is 
the step one towards this idea, the DMA idea, the first step is what CP is doing, how itself is uh, freeing from the job of transfer. This, this is how CP initiates the transfer by supplying interface to interface. CPU is providing what it is providing, supplying with the starting address and the number of words needed to be transferred. And then proceeds to execute other tasks. Hope this is clear. Uh, this one. This one is bit. Uh, let me go to our uh, one. Paint. Here uh, we take our this one. This one is your CPU. And this CPU has got inside some memory on. This memory has got some locations. Zero, one, and so on. Like this, suppose yeah. So here, what is this I/O is looking for? You have an I/O device. This I/O device wants something from T4 location to 128. That's the requirement that uh, this IO device is seeking some data uh, from this location. Suppose just for uh, understanding purpose, let us say this IO is seeking data from this memory location. So earlier what was that happening? The CPU directly involved in transferring this, this uh, location data from CPU to IO. Who was doing? CPU was doing. So that we have seen in programmed I.O. The 10,000 microsecond and all. So again, uh, so taking up here is the time consuming. So you have to recollect that to go back to that recorded videos. Now what is happening? This CPU, uh, this I.O. device, the moment it puts a request that this data is uh, required, uh, that is 64 to 128 location. CPU informs to another device called DM. So there is a also called device interface. But this interface, we are talking about this interface. CPU informs to the interface, telling that this IO device is requesting data from to 128 and how many words are re uh, requested means if, if you put here that 64 to this 64 again if you add here it is becoming 128 right so meaning these many including if you include this one then possibly it is uh, 65 that location I mean 65 words you have to put including this one, uh, the 64 included. So, like that, that information is set uh, starting address is 64, and uh, our, it will also put an ending address is 60, uh, 128. Else, it will put how many how, how many words ne needs to be like uh, instead uh, avoiding confusion. So, let us uh, take 64 only. So, uh, 64 words you have to uh, give it to this IO, like that information is placed inside this uh, interface. Uh, uh, some hardware here, some some hardware control hardware. This is called uh, control logic. Upgraded interface that is. So control logic. So in this, that information is uh, given by this uh, CPU. Given by the CPU. So now CPU can go to attend uh, having given this information. Now CPU can. Uh, attend some task one or whatever the ta task it was doing. Unlike in a programmed I.O., it was keep checking this uh, flag register and waiting 10,000 times till one byte is transferred. Instead of all that, it can happily go here and can start doing this uh, T1, T2, some tasks it can start doing. Now, who is actually looking into the matter? This interface and DMA. DMA, uh, 
DMA sends a request that this uh, bus, bus we call bus here. This is a memory, right? This is a memory having some bus. We we talked about this bus again. If I go back here, uh, this is uh, where I am here, 56, right? I have to come back here to this side. Um, here, this particular one. You see this one. You have these buses right here. This was this IO bus. So this IO bus here, this side IO bus. This are, why we are calling IO bus? Just because of reason, these wires are connected to IO devices. And this IO bus actually having data, but data lines here, address lines here, and control lines. Everything we have seen several times in the previous session. Similar to this IO bus, this processor has also got a memory, RAM and ROM. So to them also in this very fashion it is connected like a data bus, address bus and control. Put together we call memory bus. So this memory bus control here in this case, here this memory bus here, the CPU has connected here one data bus, data line, address line, control line. So this control of these buses is now given uh, when DMA requests this control earlier who was having earlier CPU was having control over this buses over these buses. Now this control of the CPU is given to home DM. DMA when talking to interface, interface is already fed with this information uh, from the CPU that starting address is 64 and end address is 128 or 64 uh, words you have to transfer. This information is uh, kept by the CPU already. And having kept this information into the interface, CPU already started attending this uh, T, uh, task 1, task 2 like that. Now CPU is nothing, it's not bothering about what to transfer. Who is bothering? is DMA. DMA has requested to release the control of this uh, <coughs> of this bus. So CPU releases the control and given to the DMA. Who is having the control over this buses, memory buses now? This is these are called memory bus the way IO bus are there. So memory bus. Who is having the control now? DMA having. So this information is already there with the uh, in, in the interface that we start is the starting address, what is the end address that this IO device is looking for. So what it does, it directly go, goes to this memory location here, that is starting from 64, and uh, it till 128 is reached. So who is actually transferring? DMA is transferring data to this IO device. Once 128 is reached, this control is released to the CPU. So in the meanwhile, this till this 64 uh, to 128 address location. If CPU is in, in need of this memory, if, if it, is, it is actually doing this T1, T2, while doing T1, T2, uh, sometimes some data may be required by the CPU itself from the, this memory. At that time, CPU ha ha has to wait it has to wait because this control is not there with the CPU now. That is the that is one thing that we have to uh, understand. This is important. Though CPU is relieved from transferring of this data uh, itself to the IO device, the job is now by the DMA because this control is given to the DMA. So. It doesn't mean that CPU, in case uh, while performing T1, T2, it can really uh, full fledged it can do T1 and T2. Of course, it will be doing. But in case, imagine if T1 needs some data from the memory. At that time, if this transfer is happening by the DMA, who is having the control over this bus? DMA is having. So CPU for a while it is not having. That for a while it has to postpone this uh, uh, it has to postpone this task t1 because task t1 is in need of some data that is there in the memory so what it does instead of waiting for this release of this uh, control from the dma of this memory bus 
so that for T1 it can access the data required that is there in the memory. It, it will keep in some, some uh, stack memory for waiting this T1 task. It will attend another task T2, which is not memory dependent. So likewise, if T2 also in need of memory, some, then it will attend something uh, T3 like that. So we are actually uh, uh, arranging this mechanism. So how is that happening, this control of transfer from uh, this bus memory bus from CPU to DMA is a, is a, uh, is a task that we have to learn here, in this, in this, have to understand here. So I was there at 56 hours. So at, at this stage, that is the brief introductory thing that uh, I took up, but elaboratively I have to go into this details here. So coming here, the CPU in, initiates the transfer by supplying the interface with a starting address and the number of words needed to be transferred and then proceeds to execute other tasks. That was the thing in the faint software we already discussed. When the transfer is made, the DMA requests memory cycles. Uh, one minute, uh, I just uh, uh, stop here. I'm back here. So when the transfer is made, the DMA requests memory cycles through the memory bus. So this also we, we discussed in the paint. Do you remember that DMA asked the CPU to release that bus control? So that is what this one, this point. When transfer is made, the DMA requests memory cycles through the memory bus. This memory bus is actually in, in the control of CPU. When the request is granted by the memory controller, the DMA transfers the data directly into the memory. This is the point that uh, we have to focus. How, uh, the, earlier I was telling how that happens, like the transfer of uh, this control. Uh, CPU was having the control of this memory uh, bus. This control is transferred to the DMA. How that happens, that is a, a subject that we have to understand in the DMA. So that point has come now. So that CPU inside it is having a, some hardware called memory controller. This memory controller. So this memory controller earlier, who was having the control over this memory controller? CPU. So this, when the request is granted by the memory controller, the DMA transfers data directly into the memory. Now, who is looking into this uh, transfer of memory bus between CPU and the DMA? This hardware, memory controller. When DMA requests a control uh, of the memory bus, CPU initiating to the memory controller that you transfer that uh, bus control not to me rather to dm so at this point of you don't need to go panic if you don't understand but brief idea if you have got that is enough because in subsequent uh, slides we'll see i think uh, at this at this point do you have any doubts so far because what is to be discussed i will take up i am going to take up this how is that happening this control transfer from the cpu the CPU telling the memory controller release this uh, bus control uh, from me to uh, DMA and all. I will discuss. Other than that, so far what I have conveyed, is that clear? Mm, you guys, I am communicating. See, I am in the presentation mode. I cannot escape and go back to uh, that what is called uh, this one. This, this, this one, uh, this message so That's why I'm interacting with people. It is better you, you convey. I will be still in this uh, presentation mode and I can uh, get your voice here straight. Till this point, is that clear? 
Are again nobody listening? Everything I said, I, I had to come out of this presentation. I had to go to the message box, see yes or no. I don't want to do that. You unmute yourself and talk to me. Are guys, are you people there or not? Make it interactive, man. Understand the problem. Someone. Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Uh, for this, why, Baba? So much of time. Others, what about others? They again, simple thing. Just unmuting and telling. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, thank you, Baba. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. If that is clear. So let us proceed to this one, the second point. The CPU merely deletes its memory access operation. This is also in the paint we discussed. CPU is performing T1 task T1. If that T1 needs some access, some info, some data to compute, suppose it is multiplying some two numbers. So some operand is needed, which is there in the memory. So task one is needed one operand, which is there in the memory. So obviously, it has to delay that task. One. That's what in the paint already I, I said this one. CPU merely delays its memory access operation to allow the direct memory I/O transfer, since peripheral speed is usually slower than processor speed. I/O memory transfers are infrequent compared to processor access to memory. This point is very very important. Why? Because the CPU merely delays its memory access operation to allow direct memory I/O transfer. Till here, it is clear in the paint we discussed that if T1 needs access of the memory, it delays because this direct memory I/O transfer is happening. Direct memory, memory, memory. Why we are calling direct memory because CPU not involved. No. That DMA is involved, so that is transferring to the I/O. So direct memory, this memory contents are directly transferred to the I/O without the involvement of the CPU. That's why it is called direct memory I/O transfer. Now this point, this the second part of this very point. Since peripheral speed is usually slower than processor speed, this is a very important point. You know why peripheral speed is uh, slower than the processor speed? In earlier 10,000 uh, microseconds example we have taken up, how slow that I/O device is working and how faster this uh, your uh, CPU is. So that is what this point is. That peripherals are slower. So I/O memory transfers are infrequent. They are not happening frequently compared to the processor access to memory. That's why this since we are say, saying this delays. Why it delays? For a while it is delaying also no problem because these these uh, uh, you know transfer from I/O to memory. Is not going to happen so frequently. If so frequently happening, then the problem. It is happening once in a while. So for a while, if if it is uh, delaying, no issues with that because later on the whole game is CPU and the memory bus. Because I/O device in a while, I mean, uh, it, it is not going to ask. frequent. It is not going to seek the data from the memory. So the who is going to play with the memory bus most of the times? CPU is going to play. For that reason, for a while it is waiting, then no issues. That is what we are meaning in this point. Now let us go to this one. This is another concept uh, called I/O processor. So this one we will take up later on. We will continue with our uh, this discussion. This is direct memory. For that I have to go to another slide. So that is there here. Yeah. Yeah. So, all this we have seen, how this is happening, let us see that one. Uh, is it visible to everyone here, yeah, there, uh, guys? Yeah. This is a bus request. 
everybody uh, q please uh, respond is that clear you see data bus here d bus everybody there ha huh. this data bus is actually bidirectional and this data bus the word that you see would have gone here instead of address bus this is a bus this is your address bus this address bus this word would have come here so there is a mistake here i will update this slide but for you the uh, explanation i gave so and the read write signals are going out so from this what i mean is there is a request coming to the cpu from where from dma dma is requesting a bus grant what is bus memory bus we are talking about memory bus earlier we have seen what is meant by memory bus the way iwo bus is we have memory bus So to that memory bus, who is requesting grant that DMA? Here is the DMA. Suppose say here is the DMA in this white area where I am moving my uh, this pointer. So it is requesting a bus grant that has come to the CPU. So CPU what it does? It is granting the bus request. This request has come. It is granting that. So but that is a bus bus grant signal. So bus grant signal is going to this uh, what we call this uh, DMA. So at that time, this you see here high impedance when bus grant is enabled. Here, here you possibly may be seeing everybody there. High impedance meaning disabled. All these are disabled when bus grant is enabled. Bus grant is enabled. All these are disabled because. actually these lines are actually going to where these are control signals you know this read write many times uh, uh, what is that called uh, common bus system there we, we have seen no several uh, control signals among them this read and write are control signals so read control signal write control signal and what is the additional address bus and what is additional here one more This is the data bus. So all are going to where from this you must able to say. Can someone say where actually these control signals are going to? We have only two options. One is uh, maybe going to I/O or maybe going to memory. Can someone respond seeing this read right where they are possibly going? You shouldn't be taking much time. hardly it will go wrong if you respond nothing is going to collapse in this world remember that much you you are daring is required here that's how you learn the subject one uh, somebody is trying out my question again i repeat see this bus request has come from where here is a dma DMA is requesting a bus. What, what bus it is requesting? That memory bus. That the control I need. Like that, who is requesting this DMA? To whom? To CPU. CPU, what it is doing? It is granting bus request. Suppose say it is granting the bus request. So, bus grant signal is going out from this arrow. When this bus grant is high enabled. i mean given bus grant is given 
at that time these signals you see that signals here address was data was read write all this four they are disabled they are disabled these are disabled when bg bg is this bg that is bus grant is enabled so my question is this signals read write this two are no they are actually going to where they are going to which device they are going these are control signals these are control signals these control signals are going to going to which device that's the question so you please answer don't type anything if you do if you type i am not going to see because i have to come out of this presentation you unmute yourself and talk Uh, that is, I appreciate at least you dare to say something. That's great. But answer is very unfortunately incorrect. Others? Hmm, shouldn't be taking much time. Yeah. That's how we make the success with uh, virtual teaching. Simply, the other end, if you're sitting. Uh, how is that possible for me to know that you are really on the track? Guys, somewhere, someone, please. At least they, the other guy did at least. That incorrect, no problem. See, Arth is in, his, uh, in its place. Are you guys, others, are there? Are DMF. DMA, that's great. At least I appreciate you dare to talk, but very unfortunately, answer is incorrect. Nothing, nothing happened. See, you are safe, and I am safe here. Nothing is happening, Baba. You others, others. So far, two guys dare to uh, answer. I appreciate really. I appreciate they are taking part in this. There are several guys who are taking part uh, and show that your presence is here. Maybe incorrect answer, no issues with that. My question is again, here is a DMA. DMA is requesting bus control. That is a memory bus control. So what it does is DMA, DMA is sending a request to the CPU. Saying that, Baba, I want the control of that memory bus. Now what is happening, the CPU, CPU is granting the permission. So that is known with a signal called bus grant. Okay. The moment bus grant is enabled by the CPU, all these signals here, you see, address bus signals, data bus signals, read signal, write signal, all these are gone, disabled, just because this BG, you know BG, this bus grant is enabled. For that reason, all these have gone, Disabled. These, these are have gone disabled. My question is: Earlier, these lines were going to which device? Earlier, before this bus grant took place, before this bus grant took place, this address bus was going to some device. This data bus was going to some device. Read was going to some device. Write going to some device. So where, where, to where, uh, to which device these these were connected earlier? That was the question, guys. Memory. That's good. Uh, big clamps, guys. There. Appreciate him. You unmute and give him a big clap. So, guys, nobody responding even to this. Okay, that's great. These are going to. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, somebody. Okay, these are going to actually memory. CPU was actually having the control, right? CPU was having the control of the memory. So uh, this read signal, write signal are going to connect it to the mem memory. Here somewhere memory is there, suppose. So somewhere memory is here. To so this memory, this CPU was accessing data from the memory or maybe writing to the memory. That's why this uh, data bus, this G D bus bidirectional, maybe, maybe CPU writing to the memory or reading from the memory. That's why this bidirectional, this data bus, D bus. This data, this data bus, what you see, where the I am hovering the mouse, this should have come, this data bus here. 
and this address bus should have come here. So this address bus is only one directional here. You see, it's going to the memory here. So and this read write when the CPU wants to read some data from the memory, it enables the read. Or if it wants to write some data to the memory, it enables the write. Meaning what? These lines actually were earlier going to the memory. But the moment CPU has granted uh, the bus control to the DMA, then CPU cannot have the control over that bus, right? Is that clear to everyone there? Yes, yes, yes. Come on, respond. Yes, sir. Yes, others. Yes, sir. Okay, only one, two, three guys are responding. There are some 25 plus. Are they sleeping or what? Are bhai. Is that clear? Somebody, I more. I, I, I request a few more guys to respond. Are respond? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's great. But few more, few more means uh, one, two, three, four, some four, four guys should speak. Yes, sir. It is clear. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So. Now the point is that's how the, we were uh, so far we worried about how we actually this grant is happening. So this is uh, inside the CPU there is a memory controller. This memory controller to this hardware in, this is seemed to be a black box at this stage. Inside there is a memory controller. To this memory controller this DMA sends a request saying that the grant of this bus this bus is this is the bus right where i'm hovering the mouse now all these are bus put together this address bus this data bus this read uh, uh, wire and write wire put together what we call the memory bus why because these wires are actually going and connected to the memory here the way earlier slides we have shown that some are connected uh, those, those are coming from the processor and those are also called address data and control those were connected to home io devices that's why we call such wires as the io bus we call such wires here in this case memory bus this memory uh, earlier who, who was having the control cpu was having the control the moment this dma has requested through this bus request signal that i want the control of this bus then CPU has granted through this bus grant enabling. Now CPU should lose the control of this bus. That's why this address, data, read, write that are coming from the CPU, they will be held at high impedance state, disabled. High impedance state means, means disabled. Here if you see this one here, go back to your screen to have this one. This is one switch coming here. You have something called here tried state, uh, suppose say tried state buffer, like this. If this is one, so whatever you give the input is seen here at the output. So this is y equal to in only, just it is just because it is a buffer. Buffer job is to simply transmit. You, someone may ask why uh, this buffer gate is required directly also we can connect you no know, like that into uh, uh, this y without without having here buffer like that also somebody may ask the thing is how do you we have to have the control so for that we have uh, sometimes we need some delays the for that reason also delay this buffer is required sometimes to uh, delays are required. Why delays are required? That is a different issue. But we need delays. So this delay got uh, this buffer got some delay. Maybe suppose uh, five nanoseconds to synchronize some to resolve some issue. Five nanoseconds delay is required. Simply why if you put this five nanoseconds you cannot introduce. For that buffer if you introduce this five nanoseconds we can achieve. That is one reason to have the buffers. The other reason to have the buffer is to have the control like this. When I can put this in over this Y here, when this is 1. If it is 0, then what happens? It is like uh, this. Oh, oh, like this. So open. Open here. So you put here uh, IN. But Y is 
high held high impedance state meaning there is nothing there is we call it is something like high impedance state so this high impedance state is uh, achieved with the help of this sort of these are called tri state gates these are called tri state uh, gates so anyway the point is here uh, uh, this point here let me get this back here uh let me pick this uh, point yes. so this high impedance state means like that yes there is a provision everywhere we have some buffers something like that they those are uh, disabled by providing zero something like that meaning these are totally disconnected the way in the paint software i have shown all these lines are disconnected from this memory and the wires that are there coming from this memory are now routed to this dma they are disconnected from this uh, cpu and the, the the wires that are kind of partly connected they are routed to this cpu so like that this is uh, the control is transferred where we are actually uh, we are here we started with this started with this so the transfer of data between fast storage such as magnetic disk and memory is often limited by the speed of the cpu it is known to you there is nothing some devices are faster some devices are uh, slower those are limited by cpu speed removing the cpu from the path and letting the peripheral device manage peripheral device means that io device manage the memory bus directly would improve the speed of transfer so what the idea here is there is a mismatch between cpu speed and the io device so io device may be much faster than cpu sometimes in some cases in some cases i would advise maybe much slower than either case may be uh, practical so such discrepancies so can be avoided we can remove we remove the cpu directly from the path that is happening that is taking place between peripheral device to memory and granting to some other device called dma this transfer technique is called direct memory access remember what is direct memory access the transfer of data between the cpu and the peripheral can be avoided by directly granting by directly facilitating the memory transfer between io devices and the memory such a such a transfer technique is called direct memory access during dma transfer the cpu is idle and has no control of the memory bus this we have seen just while ago we have seen why from that figure i had taken to you this figure this figure. and in the paint software i have shown that uh, tri state uh, buffer so that way this is uh, disabled totally where it is during dma transfer the cpu is idle and has no control of the memory bus no control of the memory bus but the cpu idle in the sense guys uh, don't think again cpu is uh, doing nothing now what is the point in the uh, memory program i was also it was not doing here also not doing here in the sense idle in the sense it is not having the control of the memory bus in that sense it is idle but the things those are not memory dependent the cpu still keep doing as been said in this very uh, today's uh, discussion in the paint software that is still task 1 task 2 memory uh, if they are not memory dependent cpu still will be doing them so uh, in the sense this idle in the sense the memory bus it is not having the control in that sense remember that that make a note of this the dma controller takes over the buses to manage the transfer directly between the io device and the memory there is a something called dma controller in this dma direct memory access there is a something called dma controller it's the job of this dma controller to take over the bus what bus we are talking about the way io bus is similar to that we have the memory bus that one so now the cpu may be placed 
in an idle state in a variety of ways. So this is again the same point here. So what we can make when CPU is actually not having the control over the memory bus, in which way we can make this CPU in the idle state, meaning memory bus when it is not accessible. So one common method extensively used in microprocessors is to disable the buses through special control signals. This this thing we have seen already in the uh, earlier when I, I discussed it here. And going back to the paint software, telling that the uh, tri-state uh, gates are used to disable. So that's the same point being said here. One way, one common method extensively used in microprocessors is disable the buses through special control signals. Let us see the another here. Figure 3 shows the two control signals in the CPU that facilitate DMA transfer. Let us see this figure 3. I think figure 3 already we have seen here. This, one. this is the figure 3. So in this figure 3, uh, we already since we already have seen, let us come back here. So the bus request, we are uh, that is BR, this we have seen BR, this bus request here, where is yeah, this BR, this bus request. This bus request, input is used by DMA controller, by DMA controller to request the CPU to relinquish control of the buses, to leave, to release, to release. This we have seen theoretically, there is nothing much here to discuss. When this input is active, when this input is active, which input we are talking about this bus request input. When bus request input is active, the CPU terminates the execution of the current instruction and places the address bus, the data bus, and the read and the write lines into high impedance state. This we have seen, guys. If you have any doubts, no issues you please unmute yourself and talk to me how sir again you explain i will explain i will feel happy to explain n plus one times but this, since we have already explained this one i'm just moving ahead if you have any doubts about these three points you can ask the high impedance state behaves like an open circuit which means that the output is disconnected and doesn't have a logic signal. i said this logic signal is not their high impedance state. This also we have seen, so like open circuit. So the CPU activates the bus grant output to inform the external DMA that buses are in the high impedance state. This also we have seen in this case here. When this is all disabled, this, this bus grant is enabled. And so that is what about this one. The DMA that originates the bus request can now take control of the buses to conduct memory transfers without processor intervention. This is a DMA here in the white space where I'm hovering the my mouse. Yes, uh, since DMA is not shown here, as in that here is the DMA. So now since this DMA has control of this buses here, this memory where I'm hovering the other side, the here, here, right, right hand side. So, and these are held at high impedance state. Who is not having the control now? The CPU is not having the control. Who is having the control now over these buses? This DMA is having the control. To DMA, what has been connected? IO is connected. Here, let us say here IO. So now, happily, IO devices are transferring or taking data through this DMA from the memory. And CPU is being eliminated from the job of transferring to the I.O. or taking from the I.O. CPU still can be doing some computational job which are memory independent. So that's what this point here somewhere. Oh, this one here. So where is that? This one. The CPU activates the bus grant output to inform the external DMA that the buses are in the high impedance state. The DMA that originates the bus request can now take control of the bus to conduct memory transfers without processor intervention. So guys, with this, I wrap the session. This other part, so far what we have discussed, let me summarize how DMA is taking the control from the CPU. That part we have discussed. Now the second part of portion is in which way this DMA control can 
have the access of the memory. One is DMA burst transfer, the other is cycle stealing method. So these are the two methods. How DMA can keep taking memory uh, contents to the I/O device, or I/O contents to the memory by these two methods. One is DMA burst transfer, the other is cycle stealing. These are under DMA control. These are under DMA control. So this topic in next session we will see. So far, what we have learned is how actually last session we learned this how actually CPU gives grants to the DMA, and how DMA is taking the control of the memory. That itself is a some bit uh, complex uh, and, uh, concept. So if I rush straight away, that's how happening. This is how happening. Then you will not get anything. So I have to slow down myself. I did that. So if you have any doubt.